At 8 o'clock in the morning, the Berkshire town of Windsor is already alive to another working day. Preparations at the castle are well underway. Everything in the state rooms, seen of many state and official occasions, are given detailed and careful attention. And for the select 100 or so men and women who are anxiously making their way to the castle, it's the culmination of many weeks of preparation. It's the day of their investiture at Windsor Castle. A short walk from Buckingham Palace at St. James's Palace is the central chancery of the Orders of Knighthood. It's part of the Lord Chamberlain's office and is responsible for governing the Orders of Chivalry and maintaining the records of all appointments within the Order. They also take the lead in organising investitures and the sending out of invitations together with warrants signed by the Queen. Let's run through the investiture at Buckingham Palace on Thursday the 10th, if I may. Uh, which the Queen is holding. Can you confirm the number of recipients we're at now? Yeah, we've got 63 now. And how many for accolade and insignia? We've got five knights. OK, thank you very much. When the various insignia arrive from the manufacturers, each decoration is very carefully scrutinised for blemishes and then stored in the central chancery's vaults to await its recipient. Only a select number of investitures are held at Windsor Castle each year, and recipients and their guests are treated to a sumptuous display of art and indeed history as they carefully make their way through this majestic building. The honours system and the concept of the investiture as we know it today is relatively new given that the history of the monarchy spans over a thousand years. Honours for chivalry have been around for centuries, but it was largely due to the Queen's grandfather, George V, who, in 1917, established the Order of the British Empire so that honours could be more widely given to deserving citizens from all walks of life, men and women, for their contribution to the war effort. With the ending of the First World War and the armistice in 1918, the King extended the range of recipients to include those from the world of science, the arts and literature, as well as the voluntary and charitable sectors. Many countries in the world today have honours and awards of one sort or another, but nowhere is the bestowing of titles and decorations performed in such splendid surroundings and with such grace, style and ceremony. Mr Martin Austin for services to accessibility in the tourism and entertainment sectors. Investitures are traditional and uh, I'm, I'm always absolutely fascinated by the people who come and uh, all the things that they, they've done. I think one of the most important aspects of, of an investiture is to be able to reward in a suitable way the selfless service and, and dedication of so many of these remarkable people. When talking with the recipients at these investitures I'm reminded of all of the great things that they have done to earn their awards. The long service that they have given throughout their working lives, the considerable achievements they have reached, and the selfless commitments they have made to their communities. Those who have deserved recognition do get reached by the honour system, and I've met many of them in my travels around the UK and elsewhere. I hope that the example set by these naturally generous and determined people will not be underestimated, um, especially that they will have enjoyed the experience of today.
as today's investiture comes to an end, there can be little doubt that the day will have given lasting pride and pleasure to all. <laughs>